In today's video, we're going to be talking about some of the different bike rack options that are available on the Toyota Tacoma. And uh, I'm going to share a little bit with you about the rack that I chose for my Tacoma. Now, there's basically four options that you have available um, for transporting a bike with any pickup. Um, the first option that you're going to have is obviously just storing the bike inside of the bed of the truck. Um, so I've got a cover on here, but if this was off, um, you could stack bikes in there. Um, probably in the Tacoma you could get about four or five bikes in there. It'd be no cost, um, but with that there is some risk of scratching the bikes um, and potentially damaging them if they're stacked up. So there are some downsides to that, but sometimes it's a good option. Oftentimes when I'm going biking by myself and it's a pretty short trip that I'm taking, um, I'll just throw my bike in the back and I find that to be the easiest route to go. Um, so that's the first option that you have available. The second option, which is um, going to be the cheapest rack option that you have available, is just to do a cover on the bed here. So it's basically a protective pad that goes over both sides of the tailgate um, and allows you to uh, set bikes with the wheel coming out uh, over the back of the bed uh, with the remainder of the bike inside of the bed. Um, the obvious advantage with this is that it's a little bit more organized than just stacking bikes in the back of the bed. Um, you know, there's still a little bit of uh, scratch potential with, uh, you know, stacking the bikes in there like that. Um, but it is uh, a fairly popular option these days. Uh, one downside to that option is that it's really more applicable to mountain bikes um, because they've got a larger gap between the tire and the frame of the bike. Uh, with a road bike, that gap's a lot smaller, and so it's harder to fit those over the bed um, in that configuration. If you decide to go that route, um, you're looking at spending anywhere between about $80 and $250 for some of the different options that are out there. Um, another downside to both of those first two options is that you don't really get any level of security. Um, you could lock the bikes together um, and there are little mounts inside of the bed that um, little, little clamps or uh, attachments that I suppose you could probably thread a lock through. Um, so I guess with either of those options, you could make them secure, but you'd have to come up with some sort of a setup. Typically that mat um, isn't going to come with any sort of a locking mechanism for the bikes. Now the third option that you have available to you is to do a roof rack uh, mount option. And I actually do have a roof rack for this vehicle that I used to transport my kayaks. Um, and I chose not to go that route for the, uh, for the bikes, and I'll tell you why. Uh, but first of all, going with the roof rack option, um, in order to do that, if your vehicle doesn't come equipped with crossbars um, and, uh, and a system on here, you can get a rack system from a number of different manufacturers where they make mounts and uh, little clips that are adaptable to your vehicle. Um, they'll slide right underneath the door. So you have a little clip that comes underneath the door here and mounts on both sides um, of the driver and passenger side of the vehicle. Um, the system that you would need just for the base to get the mounts and the crossbars to the vehicle, you're probably looking at about $500 for that setup. Like I said, I already made that investment with my kayaks, um, but chose not to go with that type of a system uh, for my bikes. Um, once, you've, once you've got the uh, kind of base system up there, obviously there are a number of different mounts that you can get, kayak racks, snowboard, uh, ski, and bike racks. With the bike racks, you're probably going to be looking at about $150 uh, for those. There's obviously a number of different options as far as quality. Um, typically, I prefer to go with kind of a higher end brand just because um, you are transporting expensive athletic equipment if you've got a nice, uh, nice bike, or at least in my case, it's fairly expensive. Um, and so I want a good rack where I know it's going to be secure and safe on the vehicle. Um, so with those, about $150. The range is really more like $80 to maybe $250 per mount. So that would uh, allow you the capacity on a vehicle like the Tacoma to probably get four bikes across the top there. Now, one really nice advantage of these systems is they typically have pretty good locking mechanisms. You can either get them where um, you've got the ability to take the, uh, the whole bike and set it up there uh, without taking the wheels off um, and it'll secure fairly similar to my hitch rack here. Um, typically they've got a little mount up here on the frame that secures it. Um, but the bike rack that I've had in the past for my vehicle on the, on the roof um, is a fork mount, which means that you take off the front wheel and then the fork hooks into the rack just like it would your front wheel. And um, those are probably the best for security as far as securing the bike to the vehicle. 
um, because the actual uh, you know fork of the bike is locked to the rack system um, but that's also kind of a downside if you've got to take the front wheel off all the time it can be a little bit of a pain uh, typically with my road bikes I haven't found that to be much of an issue but with mini mountain bikes these days having uh, disc brakes it can be uh, they can be very finicky when you take the wheels off and so I try to avoid taking my front wheel off at all costs so that I don't end up with any issues with the disc rubbing um, or the system uh, you know becoming clamped closed uh, you know with the hydraulic disc brakes so um, that's you know one downside to the roof mount system but the primary reason that I chose not to go with a roof mount system uh, this go around with my vehicle like I said I've had one in the past um, the reason I decided not to go with it this time is because of the risk of pulling into the garage with the bike on top of the vehicle now I uh, I've always gone into a habit of leaving the sunroof open anytime I had a bike on top of the vehicle just so I didn't make that mistake but many bike owners uh, that put their or their bikes on top of the vehicle will tell you that at some point in their life they've made that mistake driven into the garage I haven't yet but I know of a lot of people that have um, and I would say that there have been many times when I've gotten home and completely forgot that my bike was on top of the car and I realized at the last moment so just that uh, risk potential that I've had was enough reason for me to stray from uh, from that type of system um, this go around the other downside to putting a bike on top of the vehicle is that you lose a little bit of aerodynamics um, and it creates a lot more wind noise which isn't so bad if you're doing just a short uh, short trip but if you're driving across the state or across the country or something with a bike on top of the vehicle um, makes a lot of noise having it up there and it decreases the fuel economy um, and so that's a big one too um, the other nice thing about having it on the back of the vehicle instead of up on top is that you don't get dead bugs on it so I've had that a lot too where I've had my bikes on top of my vehicle um, you know driven for a couple hours and you take your bike off later on and there's a bunch of dead bugs on the uh, on the bike so that's a downside for sure um, but still the roof rack option does have some advantages like you said security is one of those really great things about the roof mount option now uh, this go around what I decided to go with was the hitch uh, mount rack and these seem to be uh, very popular these days um, the hitch mount options have been available for a long time in a uh, frame mounted uh, style where there's basically a bar that comes up and then you've got kind of a bracket that sticks out here with mounts that can hold the bikes on there um, those are pretty inexpensive you can get a rack like that for anywhere between about eighty dollars and two hundred dollars so that can be a good option um, it doesn't necessarily secure the bike quite as well because they can still kind of sway back and forth a um, little bit more of that risk of scratching um, but it is a pretty good economical option uh, if you're looking to do something fairly cheap um, those types of racks don't really come with locking mechanisms either uh, but again you can strap the bikes together or you can uh, find a way to get like you know a long lock and uh, connect it to the vehicle to lock it in place now with the uh, hitch mount option uh, you can get these in typically either like a two bike setup or a four bike setup a lot of uh, a lot of the systems come where you buy basically a two bike setup and it has the ability for you to connect in an additional piece for four bikes so you can leave just the smaller setup with two bikes on um, or add the additional two um, to give you that added capacity of four when you need it <clears throat> um, now like I said the reason that I really wanted to go with this system this time around is so I didn't have to take the front wheel off with my mountain bike uh, with a road bike it's not quite as much of an issue um, but this rack does work really well for road bikes and mountain bikes um, on here so the way that uh, this one's set up uh, one bike would face this way with the front wheel on this side and then you'd have front wheel on the other side um, it uh, you know secures in two points at the front and at the rear here and so it gets the bike really snug it does move around just a tiny bit but when you have bikes uh, you know two bikes on here um, there's no way for the two bikes to come in contact and so it completely minimizes scratch potential um, so that's really nice uh, one downside is that with the backup camera right here when the rack is on here that becomes pretty much useless you can't really see where the back of the rack is so that is a downside and then obviously it makes the vehicle quite a bit longer um, you can see as we step back here um, the 
additional length that it adds to the vehicle can be fairly significant. Again, this is just a two, uh, two bike system. If you add on those additional two and you get to four bikes total, it's gonna be sticking out all the way to here. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, it makes it a little bit more difficult to park, uh, maneuver in tight spaces. Um, so that is a downside. Um, one of the other downsides to these systems is they are fairly expensive. Um, depends a lot on the brand that you go with. Like I said, I like to go with higher end brands. Typically, uh, this is a Kuat system. Uh, Yakima and Thule make really nice systems as well. Um, I purchased this system for $250. It was a um, kind of like a previous year's model. And so I got a pretty good discount and then uh, I think it was also on sale. So 250 was a pretty good price uh, for this system. What you're gonna be looking at price-wise for a uh, rack of this sort um, is gonna be between about $200 for a base model all the way up to about $1,000 if you wanted to get one that could hold four bikes and was really higher end, um, higher end brand. So like I said, they can be really expensive. That's definitely one downside to these setups. Um, but you know, uh, it just kind of depends on what your needs are and preferences are. Now, uh, another difference between going with the roof mount system and the hitch mount is that typically with the roof mount system, you're going to leave it on all the time. Um, like I said, I use mine for kayak, kayaks, and now that we're getting into the fall and close to winter, uh, I'm kind of done with my kayaks for the year, so I'm able to take the system off for the winter. Uh, it takes away a little bit of that road noise or wind noise. Um, and helps a little bit with gas mileage. The nice thing, or I guess the, the, the difficult thing about that is on a day-to-day -day basis, you're not gonna take the rack on and off uh, with your bikes up there. And so you've got that wind noise all the time. Um, with the hitch mount system, what's really nice is that you can take it on and off very easily on a, on a regular basis. Now on the security front, this rack is okay, but it's not as good as some of the uh, roof mount systems uh, that are available. Um, there probably are some other hitch mount systems that are more secure than this. What would really be ideal is to have a locking mechanism on this front piece that just locks the bike on. Um, but in this case, uh, you know, this is kind of more, uh, it's a higher end mo or a manufacturer, kind of one of their lower end models. Um, so it's one of the things that you sacrifice. Uh, if you get up to those thousand dollar racks, then you're probably gonna have better locking mechanisms. What you get with this system is just a cable lock here that you can strand through the frame of the vehicle or the bike. And then down at the bottom, you've got these two little loops that if we were to pull this lock off, could just go right in here and lock the bike to the, uh, to the hitch. And so it provides some level of security. Cable locks are not necessarily the, the best locks. I mean, this can still be cut but it does make it a little bit more difficult. Um, oftentimes what I will also do in addition to that, especially if I've got multiple bikes, is lock the bikes together or just bring an additional lock or two uh, to kind of lock the bike on so it's a little harder uh, for somebody to try to get it off. So this rack's got two point of contacts with the bike. This one you pull up, lift down, and on the back of the bike you can just flip this out and remove the bike from the rack. And then the rack itself is connected to the vehicle, obviously through the hitch. What we've got here is this little guy pops off. You can insert a key into this lock and then pull, uh, pull this guy out and loosen this to pull the rack out from the vehicle. So it's a pretty easy setup um, in some ways. It is a little pain to try to get down here and unlock and lock that on a regular basis. And then this little switch here can flip up and then you can push the rack up to get it out of the way. So that helps a little bit with that um, space at the back of the vehicle when the bikes aren't on there, which is nice just again with making the system not quite so long or making the vehicle not so long when the system is set up. So that's an overview of some bike rack options for the Toyota Tacoma. If you've got additional recommendations or if you found a system that you really like, leave that in the comments below. Uh, if you've got any additional comments or questions, you can also throw those down below. For more videos of the third generation Tacoma, subscribe to my channel. In the meantime, thanks for watching.